us and give us just a, just a rough description of what the principles governing the Youth Cafe would be. Uh, thanks, uh, uh, Gladin, and to organizers, Andrew, uh, my fellow panelists, it's an absolute honor and pleasure for us to share our experiences and perspectives as an organization, the Youth Cafe, to uh, this forum of uh, young African entrepreneurs. Uh, uh, the Youth Cafe, to your question, Gladin, is a multi-award winning, uh, non-profit, uh, and pan-African youth-led and youth-serving organization with its regional headquarters here in Nairobi, Kenya. Uh, since our founding, uh, way back in the year 2012, the Youth Cafe has been working with uh, young people uh, around Africa to advance youth-led approaches that are geared toward uh, achieving sustainable development, uh, social equity, innovative solutions, community resilience, and transformative change. Uh, the, your question of principles, our work is underpinned by a certain set of principles that include uh, to build a more relevant, sustainable, and effective enabling environment for education and work systems for young people that recognizes their rights and will. Uh, we also work uh, around a principle that uh, involves young people at all levels of decision-making processes that will eventually affect their lives. We work to partner with particularly young people themselves to build a better, more resilient world for all generations. And lastly, uh, our, we frame our youth programs on a gender responsive and right-based approaches. Uh, and these imply that young people are considered as uh, right holders. Uh, our mission is to enrich the lives of young people by modeling and advancing youth-led approaches uh, toward fostering young people's civic efficacy, community resilience, sustainable development, and equitable society, as well as proposing innovative solutions that are able to drive social progress and inspire transformative change by utilizing innovative research, policy, entrepreneurial and advocacy actions. And today with me uh, on the forum is uh, one of uh, the uh, young entrepreneurs we have within our network as uh, the Youth Cafe is membership based with uh, over 700,000 uh, young men and women subscribing voluntarily to be its members and over 5,000 organizational members. So uh, let me uh, welcome Glodin and ask uh, Glodin to the question to introduce herself and uh, a bit about uh, the business that she does. Glodin. Thank you so much, Willis. Um, as you stated, my name is Glodin. I am from South Africa, the north of Johannesburg, actually, to be specific. And um, I'm what they call a, a serial entrepreneur because I like to plug my hands into a lot of opportunities. Um, and one of the businesses that I did start and I was self-taught in it was Sugar Plum Spa, which has now been, um, I, I guess, with the fortune of having COVID-19. Uh, and I say that because um, we then had to move the business from just it being a beauty salon or a beauty spa to actually being a mobile beauty spa, which I think wouldn't have happened. Um, and I know it's very unfortunate with COVID-19, but it wouldn't have happened if we didn't have the restriction of movement for us to think beyond just a normal beauty spa. So the first company that I do have, like I said, is Sugar Plum Spa, which is a, a beauty umbrella um, where we do everything in the beauty industry, your nails, facials, spa services, and the list goes on. And secondly, I'm a co-founder for a PR and marketing firm with, a, with another friend of mine uh, that is called Global Ethics. And I'm an investor as well. And um, I do have shares in other uh, businesses that I do not personally run, but I guess that's why I call myself a serial entrepreneur is like I said, I do plug myself into many, um, many streams of income. So in a nutshell, that is what I do. And also, I am a business and uh, communications associate with the Youth Cafe. Uh, thank you, Gladine. Uh, I think this highlights uh, um, 
how the youth cafe is able to work with uh, some of uh, uh, upcoming young entrepreneurs within its its network. Uh, uh -huh. Do you do you have any uh, other specific question you would want me to uh, address? Yes, um, you did mention the the pillars that you guys are governed by at the youth cafe, but I'm just. I think more interested, and maybe the guests are as well, just to understand what areas um, the Youth Cafe is really focused on when it comes to empowering the youth. Absolutely. Uh, the Youth Cafe works across uh, eight thematic areas that provide the essential organizing framework for its work. One of the areas is education and skills. And in this sector of work, we work to increase access to efficient, high quality education and training systems to facilitate young people's access to education and integration uh, into the job market. We also work on the second pillar, which is business job creation and entrepreneurship, which is actually the theme under which we are sharing our experiences in this uh, uh, distinct forum, uh, where we work to increase uh, training men and mentorship opportunities for young people to leverage and create self-employment and job opportunities for other young people, as we know the uh, not only the rise of uh, youth um, uh, unemployment, but also the demographic, uh, the increasing, increasing what 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 some would call the youth bulge, uh, is making it uh, uh, necessary uh, a matter of necessity for young people to come up with their own innovations and solutions to communities and some of uh, those are entrepreneurial in nature that are able to not only create opportunities for themselves but also others uh, to address the uh, high, high rates of uh, youth uh, unemployment. We also work on universal health coverage where we, we work to, ac uh, to increase access to quality and affordable uh, as well as responsive and youth-friendly health services that help young people to stay healthy, empowered, embracing gender equality norms and uh, demanding their rights. Uh, we work on uh, strands of work related to governance and political inclusion, um, um, as well as environmental preservation and climate change with the aim of increasing in initiatives and programs that improve the lives and lifestyles of young people through uh, providing reliable, particularly green, uh, green jobs. Uh, so these, uh, I would say, are the, uh, the eight uh, pillars uh, that underpin our work. Uh, um, and, and, and I think uh, due to, of course, uh, COVID, we've also seen effects on our work and how we are able to, uh, to, uh, to go about, uh, you know, having our programs and doing our activities. But I would want to hear specifically from you, uh, Gladin, how has uh, uh, COVID or challenges related to uh, COVID and also broad challenges affected uh, your work as a, as a young business person and also a, a young woman in business? Um, well, I'll, I'll touch on the, the business that was mostly affected and that is um, with the beauty industry. Obviously, when COVID-19 struck, um, there was a lot of uncertainty in terms of you know the economy, in terms of health in general. And of course, we couldn't have access to the one thing that allowed us to make money, which is access to the people. So if you can't see clients, you weren't able to, to make money during that time. However, fortunately for us, when, when the restrictions did start opening up, um, we were able to then diversify ourselves, like I said, to then offer the services as a mobile service to come into someone's home and actually render the service, um, eliminating um, I guess the stresses of having to go outside and be exposed to the virus. But I think the challenges that we did have, like I, like I mentioned, were just not being able to plan ahead, especially when we first heard about the COVID-19 is that it's a pandemic that we, we hadn't really been exposed to. Uh, by we, I say people that are my age group and younger, or even, um, you know, people that weren't impacted by other previous pandemics before. We didn't know how to react to it. And I think um, there was that instability financially and, of course, not being able to keep up with the market and not be able to plan ahead. So um, 
I'll, I'll pose the challenges and also just briefly say how we kind of moved or maneuvered around those challenges in order for us to be able to sustain the business um, is that we also had the right systems, I guess, in mind, because I, I, I interest myself with doing research way above just in South Africa. So what is it that other people in other countries are doing within the beauty industry that I can then work around to be able to sustain my own business. And I think with the challenge of not being able to penetrate the market or not being able to have that uh, stable income, if I may put it like that, during COVID-19, then you kind of have to, or rather that's what I did. I had to maneuver and think outside of the box to say over and above the services that I'm offering now, what what opportunity does this pandemic actually pose? Um, and I guess another challenge that I really struggled with was welcoming the change. Um, welcoming the change personally, welcoming the change in how I would run my business and also my staff, how to welcome the fact that you have to now literally change how you run the business and how they would work to, to just kind of um, accommodate the COVID-19 restrictions that we were living in. Sounds exciting. I mean, I'm 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 so I'm, I'm so attentive to this conversation, and it's interesting that Glodin, you've been able to move through the face of COVID nineteen when when it's when it struck, and though I mean the uncertainties in the space, we as entrepreneurs, we always don't know what will be the next shock, and so creating or more like creating a system in which to build resilience. It's, it's amazing seeing ahead planning now capturing the moments in which you can be able to just capitalize on your initial resources and just excel so that you won't be swallowed up by the system um i mean that's so in, ex, that's so insightful actually and kudos for that so i want to just try a question to to you in, in terms of i mean you're a woman of many hearts and so i don't really know how to <laughs> direct this question to you, but let's just consider it from, from the face of young businesses starting up. As someone who has built businesses and is yet also investing in others, what do you think in your own perspective is the biggest challenge of youth entrepreneurship in maybe Nairobi or a country where you found yourself building an enterprise? What would you say? Because I think Africa, our problems are not so different from each other. And so maybe there are some things that you see that someone can relate to in Ghana. And so what would you consider as your biggest of all challenges, identifying young entrepreneurs and just encouraging them to be able to solve those challenges and thrive as someone who has just, I mean, win a lot in your own, in your own space? Yeah, um, I would say the biggest challenge is access to information. And I think the previous speakers did kind of touch on that, is that we are fortunately moving towards a better space with regards to that. I mean, with, with such conversations like the one that we're having now, where we are actually willingly and also getting assistance from government or other business people to say, here's the information, here's how we can help. But I think there is still some kind of a lack with regards to educating people on how to run businesses and start up businesses. When I started, there was no reference at all in my circle, in my family uh, of anyone that had started a business. So you find that a lot of people actually start businesses without even the knowledge of how, um, how to handle finances. And it becomes a trial and error, which is what I went through is that there was no reference person directly mm -hmm. that I could ask for information. But also the more that you are interested in your business is the more that you're interested to network with other people, whether you are trying to learn about other industries or just getting the information on how to run a business. I think networking with other people can actually put you in a better place. And I am glad that we are getting more platforms such as this, where you're able to mm, do that. Amazing. I think, um, um, can you hear me? Yeah, I can. I mean, I've, yes. I've, I can, I can. And thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for sharing. Thanks a lot for sharing that. Um, I think it just dives right into 
um, Willis, Willis's zone. So you can hear me, Willis. Um, what would you say as way of motivating us to be able to, since you are creating a platform where entrepreneurs can access information and be able to seamlessly, what would you advise entrepreneurs looking into the future for a safe and then thriving Africa? Mm -hmm. Uh, absolutely. Uh, uh, thanks, Andrew. And uh, I mean, for us, our journey uh, started a little, uh, a little more than a decade ago, and uh, we've uh, we've had different moments, and it's been a journey. For example, in terms of uh, um, creating a go-to platform, where uh, so far we have uh, you know over seven hundred thousand registered young men and women who are members and uh, a majority of them being young entrepreneurs which actually we didn't set out to actually be a membership based platform we see the uh, opportunities and the clear value that uh, young people see uh, find in terms of forging connections in terms of uh, peer learning uh, platforms for mm -hmm. uh, sharing experiences uh, extremely important and this is I think uh, what uh, the platform provides uh, more than any other thing because if there is an opportunity let's say for funding it's very easy to come together bring entrepreneurs who have uh, uh, ex experience and expertise in that area and take part and uh, we also have increasingly seen uh, that uh, once you have a credible platform then uh, the navigation, particularly of, of financing, becomes easy because uh, almost 90% of the time we are asked, we are approached by investors uh, with different opportunities from time to time rather than uh, the other way. So I think uh, uh, we, we need to, uh, to leverage on our, on, on our differing uh, experiences and contexts uh, come together mm and be able to share a regular experience. So, you know, a forum like this, if it could be even quarterly or monthly, extremely important in yes. terms of bringing, uh, you know, entrepreneurs together. So, you know, the challenges you are grappling with are not used mm. a lot. There is another entrepreneur, you know, in Ivory Coast, in Ghana, facing the same challenges. And perhaps those that are able to face them and overcome them successfully. There's a lot of lessons to be learned on, uh, particularly on overcoming challenges and overcoming failures that young people uh, and, and, and particularly young entrepreneurs uh, can learn from working together uh, and, 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 and leveraging off each other's uh, 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 competencies and advantages. Uh, and with respect Fantastic. to COVID, uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you, I mean, <laughs> Uh, thank you so much. I'm just taking the words out of your mouth. Uh, but I think you just um, summarized the entirety of what has led you into doing what you do with Youth Cafe. Um, I'd love to know more. I think the audience are following with me, but then, I mean, this is how far time can permit us, right? And so thank you so much, Willis. And I'm pretty sure that somebody listening to you has been so much inspired today and i'm sure that they are going to do so well looking into the future and trying to build a society that um it's interest uh, uh oh, i mean to first access information create community because i mean very very few of us uh, understand the power of community and and uh, we thank the sbai shared value africa initiative to, to for creating this platform as a way of from, uh, bringing entrepreneurs together, connecting the dots and solving certain things that the unseen ones, right? The, the unnoticeable ones. 